Our second scripture comes from the book of Malachi. Hear the word of the Lord. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He'll purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in the days gone by, as in former years. So I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless and deprive the foreigners among you of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Forgive me, JP. This is going to hurt me. Maybe more than you. True story. I like true stories. Even when they're hard to believe. So years ago, there was a couple. And it was back in the 80s and 70s. And like a lot of us, they were worried about nuclear war. Y'all remember those days, right? And so they started doing some research and some traveling, <coughs> trying to find the least likely place to be affected by nuclear war. So they did the research, and they traveled, and they traveled, and they did the research. And then maybe late 81, early 1982, they sent their pastor a postcard. They had found the perfect place in the Falkland Islands. For those of us who do not remember all of that, in 1982, the Falkland Islands at the southern tip of Argentina were invaded by the Argentinians. So much for escaping war. Ironic or brutal. I remember as a kid following that in the press and being amazed at all that was going on, trying to figure out why those little islands in the middle of the South Atlantic. It certainly couldn't be for the weather. Peace. Peace. The second Sunday of Advent. We want to talk about peace. It has often been described or reminded that we're not talking about the pieces in the absence of war. We often like to describe peace as an inner peace. It may be time to sit on a pillow and cross our legs and meditate. We like to define things, don't we? By defining things, we gain control of them an understanding, put boundaries and limitations on them. And we forget, who are we to define the divine? Peace. You heard it earlier. He would be the Prince of Peace. It would be remiss if we were to think Certainly in Old Testament terms, they were not talking about war. After all, our forebears, the Israelites, were involved in a few armed conflicts. That would be naive of us to think that they were simply talking about an inner peace. I tend to think peace is the absence of struggle, whether that's on the outside or on the inside. And what is it that causes struggles? Our own definitions, our limitations, our borders, our boundaries. When something doesn't go the way we think it should, it creates a struggle. <coughs> you hear those words? Our Lord is coming to judge us. Each of us should be afraid. Very afraid. The idea of God coming tomorrow should make us quake where we sit or stand to be judged for our sins, for each of us has fallen short. 
each of us stumbles, has broken relationships, hurt somebody. Sometimes intentionally, knowing this group, usually unintentionally, but it happens. And you hear those words from Malachi? That was just mean. That was just brutal. I will come to put you on trial. Being in court is not easy. And he goes on to list all these things. How does he finish? But don't be afraid of me. Don't be afraid of me. I'm putting you on trial, but don't be afraid. Peace. What was it our Lord said? My peace I give to you. Not as the peace of the world. Our Lord's peace. Who amongst us would define that? What did Jesus mean? We struggle with it. We try to find it. And when we think we found it, we lost it. The season of preparation, the season of waiting, our anxiety. We want what we want, and we want it when? Y'all got that one down. <laughs> they pass that test. Because we set the definitions, we set the boundaries. This is our expectations. Wars, because governments decide this is what we think is right, and we don't agree with you. Whatever that may be. And then peace is lost. We get into debates which sink into arguments and to fights because this is what I think, I disagree with you, you're wrong. Now we have struggle. I'll tell you what peace is. Peace is getting on one side of Houston, driving across to the other side, and rush hour traffic and having your blood pressure stay low and level the entire way. <laughs> you know they should be going faster, not in your lane. Use your blinker. Don't cu cut me off. We have these expectations. Somebody once asked me about rush hour traffic. It seems to be a theme in Houston. And I live a lot of times, so I understand it. How many times should I forgive the people in traffic? Brian said, how many times has God got to forgive you? Conversation was short. Traffic is traffic. Why do we struggle? We know what's going to happen. Because it doesn't fit our expectations. Why do we struggle with God? Because God doesn't fit our expectations. We choose to define God, forgetting that God defines us. We try to define God's intents, and thus define God. Who are we to define the peace of Jesus Christ? Who are we to say, well, it only means this, or it only means that? We come to the season, preparing and waiting for the arrival of our Lord. And we should be afraid. For we know not what happens when the Master comes. We think we do. We hope we do. But nobody knows. But our Lord says, don't be afraid. I'm coming, but don't be afraid. The peace in there is trusting in God. Trusting in God's boundaries and God's definitions. It comes at the heart of our faith. Surrender. It's going to be okay because God is in control. I don't like it. I don't understand it. This is not according to my plan. It doesn't fit my preconceived notions, but I'm okay with this. It goes against who we are, what we are. We spend our lives with struggle. We spend our lives debating. That costs too much. That person did the wrong thing. They're not raising their kids right. The school's not teaching right. The list is endless. It should be done my way. And we all too quickly forget this is God's creation. This is God's church. And we are on God's mission. What is peace? Peace in simple terms is absence of struggle. What is the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Something incredible beyond defining. 
This is a season where we seek that. And maybe for brief moments we might find it on a silent night. When the house is put to rest, we finally get to catch our breath. When as Joseph Moore will write, all is calm. For us, peace is elusive, but a worthy venture. I encourage you. I encourage myself. Let go of the definitions. Embrace the mystery. For we do not know God's intentions or God's plans. We don't know what that day will look like. But isn't it enough to know? Isn't it calming to know? That God has not abandoned us and will once again come into our lives. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful and loving God, you have called on us to not be afraid. You have encouraged us to put down our struggles, to embrace you completely, Lord Jesus, forgive us for embracing you. Therein lies the struggle. For you are not the God we expected. For some, not even the God we wanted. But you are the God of creation. The architect of life. Lord, grant us your peace. To trust completely in you. And to wait patiently knowing that your plans are being worked out. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Reflection. A time to think. A time to ponder. A time to wonder. Perhaps we cannot define the peace of Jesus Christ. But maybe we can describe it. Reflect on that, my friends.